Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, we did a video covering some early iPhone 16 leaks. More specifically, we talked about how the iPhone 16s are increasing in size, with the 16 Pro getting bumped to a 6.3 inch display from 6.1, and the 16 Pro Max getting bumped to a 6.9 inch display from 6.7. We've also touched upon some camera improvements, including some updates on the 16 Pro Max's telephoto module. And in this video, we have five more updates to talk about, some of which I think you'll find very interesting. Just like our sponsor, Dreamy Tech. Dreamy Tech's L20 Ultra offers the complete home cleaning experience with a low maintenance, multi-purpose automatic base station. Check it out by using the link below as well as later in the video. Okay, so one of the main new leaks is when it comes to the Ultrawide module. You see, the iPhone 15 Pro used the exact same Ultrawide module as the iPhone 14 Pro. There were no hardware improvements whatsoever. But because of Apple's new Smart HDR5 processing, the results coming out of the iPhone 15 Pro's as Ultrawide were significantly better than on the 14 Pro. Especially at night, where the differences were literally night and day with a 15 Pro looking noticeably more detailed, with a clearer image, and oftentimes also a brighter image as well. Now, with the iPhone 16 Pros, we are rumored to be getting a huge upgrade when it comes to this ultrawide module, specifically an upgrade to a 48 megapixel sensor from the current 12. Now, if you compare this to a lot of the Android phones out there, you'll realize that a lot of them do actually have 48 megapixel ultrawide sensors already but Apple being Apple will likely want to do things a bit differently. What I mean by this is that, yes, a lot of the Android phones do have 48 megapixel ultrawide sensors, but a lot of these sensors are mid-range, and a lot of them do not have any pixel binning whatsoever. I'm quite certain that Apple will be using a fairly high-end ultrawide sensor here, one that also supports pixel binning, as that way, we'll not only get super high resolution images in daytime, but when it comes to nighttime, we could also see some improvements there too. As otherwise, without pixel binning, the night shots will be getting a downgrade since the pixels themselves on the sensor will be smaller. And not only that, but I also expect Apple to allow us to shoot in Pro Raw at 48 megapixels with this ultrawide module too, something that we can only do currently with the main module, given that it's the only one that can shoot at this resolution. Plus, whenever you take a panorama, you can already take those with uh, the ultrawide module too. But imagine the sheer quality that you'd be able to preview the panorama in when every single one of those stitches, those individual images, would be four times the resolution. So yeah, I'm really excited for this upgrade myself. And by the way, if you like the wallpapers on our iPhone 16 renders, they're all from our app Wallpapers, where we've got 16 wallpaper packs for you, including the most recent Prism Pathway and Arabian Abstracts, which I think you will absolutely love. New stunning packs launching every Friday. Now, this next one is probably even more interesting, and that is the Apple A18 Pro chip. You see, the iPhone 15 Pros, they introduced a Pro iPhone chip for the very first time, and that was the Apple A17 Pro. But rarely enough, the standard iPhone 15s did not get the regular A17 chip, but instead, they simply got the same A16 that the iPhone 14 Pros were using a year prior, which may seem a bit confusing. Well, the good news is that next year, we are set to be getting the A18 chip in the standard iPhone 16s, and then the A18 Pro in the iPhone 16 Pros. But the best part here is that rather than the A18 simply being the A17 Pro, it seems like it will be an entirely new chip. In fact, a recent report from investment firm Haytong International Securities claims that both the A18 and the A18 Pro will be manufactured on TSMC's brand new N3E process, rather than the current N3B that the A17 Pro is manufactured on. So yeah, this alone confirms that the A18 will be a completely different chip to the A17 Pro, which does make a lot of sense, as the A17 Pro was a huge upgrade over the A16. We got two extra gigabytes of RAM for a total of eight rather than six. Like the last time we got a RAM increase was back with the iPhone 12 Pro in 2020. Then we also got ray tracing and enough raw performance to be able to handle console quality games like Resident Evil Village. Like what's even crazier is that the A17 Pro outperforms the M1 chip in single core and comes really close in both multi-core and graphics. This is absolutely shocking coming from a smartphone chip. 
so it wouldn't really make a lot of sense for Apple to give the regular iPhone 16s this much performance, as obviously they're trying to sell their Pro models. Reason why they are designing this new A18 chip, which I believe will actually be inferior to the A17 Pro in a number of ways, like less RAM and a lower overall performance. Not only that, but since both the A18 and the A18 Pro will be manufactured on the new N3E process rather than the N3B, yields will be much higher which will result in less shipping delays compared to this year, where delays for the 15 Pros have been quite significant. And before we move on to the next leak, I want to give a shout out to the smartest robot vacuum that I've seen. Dreamitex L20 Ultra is the new all-encompassing robot vacuum cleaning system that vacuums and mops. What's truly unique about it is its mop extent technology, which automatically adjusts the position of the mop heads based on the space around it to get within 2 millimeters of edges. Plus, the L20 OS Ultra can also raise or remove its magnetic mop heads so that it can vacuum carpets without getting them wet. Also, its Pathfinder Smart Navigation System and Environment Sensing can map your home and pick out obstacles for each run so that nothing gets in the way or left behind. Upon returning to the comprehensive base station, it automatically empties and charges the vacuum, cleans and dries the mop heads whilst topping up the cleaning solution. All of this can be seen on the Dreamy app, where you can even create Siri shortcuts to automate the process. Check out Dreamy Tech by using the link below. And now, back to the video. The next leak is regarding the display. More specifically, its brightness. You see, ever since the iPhone 14 Pros, the brightness hasn't really been an issue for the iPhone. I find it absolutely crazy that the iPhone 14 Pro, and the 15 and the 15 Pro for that matter, they can now get all the way up to 2000 nits when viewing them in direct sunlight. Like, that display is so visible that it generally looks normal. It doesn't look washed out, it doesn't look dim, it looks perfectly visible. And that's not something that I can say about some of the other phones, like the S23 Ultra, which even though Samsung claims that it can go up to 1750 nits, this is only when viewing HDR content. Outdoors, it only goes to about 1200, so the difference between a 2000 nit iPhone and the S23 Ultra's 1200 nit outdoor brightness is very noticeable. And now, according to the Alloc, Apple is exploring the idea of using microlens technology to reduce the power consumption of their OLED displays. What this means is that Apple could essentially go in two ways here. They could either keep the same level of brightness that we have now, and then the battery will last you a bit longer, uh, as these displays will be more power efficient, or they could boost the brightness while keeping the power consumption the same as it is now. And I think that they're gonna go with the latter approach here, mostly because of two reasons. One, the iPhone 15 Pros, they kept the same level of brightness as the 14 Pros, so we've had no improvements here. And two, other manufacturers like Xiaomi have already teased even brighter displays than Apple, with brightness levels reaching 3000 nits peak. So Apple obviously needs to remain competitive, and the best way for them to do that is to use that extra power efficiency of the display and then bump up the brightness. Now, I don't think we're gonna see crazy numbers like 3000 of outdoor brightness, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get numbers like 2500 nits or so. Of course, Apple will still need to sort out their thermal system first, as even now, iPhones can only sustain 2000 nits for a fairly short period of time, usually for about four to five minutes after which they do get hot and the brightness does tend to dim to lower numbers. And the good news is that Apple is doing just this. According to leaker Kosutami, Apple is said to be working on a graphene thermal system for the iPhone 16 that would solve the overheating issues that the iPhone 16 Pros had at launch. I mean, sure, Apple did release a software update to reduce those from happening, but still, a graphene thermal system would allow the entire iPhone to run cooler, and therefore allow the display to stay brighter for longer. Plus, if you take a look at a lot of the high-end Android phones, most of them have a vapor cooling chamber to keep temperatures down. Apple has none of that. So this new graphene thermal system could also help in gaming, where we could see some more sustained performance. Which brings us to the latest new leak, which is Wi-Fi 7 which analyst Jeff Poo reports that the iPhone 16 will be supporting. Now, this is really surprising as Wi-Fi 7 is really new, as in it's not even out yet, and it's only expected to launch in 2024, which means that Apple will be one of the very first companies to adopt it. Like, when we take a look at the most recent standard, which is Wi-Fi 6E, this was introduced in 2020, but Apple only adopted it this year with the iPhone 15s. So the fact that Apple plans on adopting Wi-Fi 7 day one 
is awesome. As Wi-Fi 7 is said to be bringing significantly faster speeds of up to 46 gigabits per second as opposed to 9.6, which was the highest limit of Wi-Fi 6E. So 46 gigabits per second is actually faster than Thunderbolt 4 speeds, which are 40 gigabits per second, which is absolutely insane. Like this opens the door to a huge number of possibilities from connecting to a future version of the Apple Vision Pro at Thunderbolt speeds wirelessly to airdropping ProRes files from your iPhone to your Mac almost instantly. Plus when internet providers do start supporting faster speed, which I think the max right now is about 10 gigs per second, only for very few providers in the world, uh, you'll already be ready for it. Of course, if your wallet is also ready. So yeah, do let me know your thoughts on all of these updates and feel free to subscribe for even more updates in the future. I'm Daniel, this means Zenoff Tech and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers.